Aloha. I'm Tim Apicella, your host for Moving Hawaii Forward. This week, we examined a distasteful topic that few of us living here in paradise wish to acknowledge. That occurs on our streets and highways and roadways, and that's road rage. It seems to be a contradiction of terms to talk about the beauty and aloha of Hawaii and road rage in the same sentence. Yet, here we are. While researching the story, I shared with friends recent news stories of a deadly shooting and multiple stabbing event, all stemming from road rage events. They are all shocked to hear about this and a 2015 uh, nationwide survey ranking Hawaii the number one state with road rage incidents and Honolulu coming in at number 22. Today, we'll look at what road rage looks like, what its causes are, and what to do to protect yourself and your family if you're ever confronted with a driver who's upset with you. My guest to discuss this important topic is Jay Fidel, president of Think Tech Hawaii. Jay, thank Whoa, you so much. Yeah. How are you? Really, wow, number one state. At it least is. we're number one in something. Yeah. That's the wrong thing we want to we want to be number one in, unfortunately. And know this though, I mean, statistics are hard because there's really no government agency that's gathering this. So a lot of these statistics are gathered on um, social media um, websites. Mm, yeah, but still, um, it's chilling. It's not a good place so for us to be. So why is that? Why are we number one? Well, I, it's hard for me to really, you know, I, I, in researching this. I think it's a combination of people who have lived here all their lives and they have a certain driving habit and a lot of that's speed because you know before H1 maximum speed was 45 miles an hour right yet then we have an import from all the different states and all the different places around the world they have ingrained habits of driving and those ingrained habits do not quite commingle well with the culture of driving here and I think that's a big part of it. Um, <clears throat> I mean, it's dangerous to uh, have road rage that, that kills, dangerous to have murders and stabbings and, you know, with total strangers. And yeah. they say that most of these violent crimes are members of the family, you have, you know, some kind of relationship with them. Uh, in this case, in road rage, it's probably never that. It's just you have, a, you, you have some kind of driving altercation with them, and that's your only relationship. You never met the guy before. Yeah. And it's, it's very scary. There's a spark, but then there's an acceleration or a hierarchy of of events that occur in road rage. So we're going to go over that later in the show. Is yeah. The 20 steps of, or the hierarchy of road rage, and it's it's pretty uh, disconcerting to see this. Yeah. But um, I want to play a video, and I'm going to set it up a little bit here. Is um, This happened uh, back on September 10th, 2014. Um, the driver was named Ryan um, Arakaki, and uh, he described this on his YouTube that he posted, and it's gone viral nationwide. and. He said, uh, the lady was looking down at something, maybe it was her phone or something else, but it, there was a good car length and a half of free space in front of her. So I changed lanes. She was completely still, not moving at all, waiting for a red light to change. So try to visualize that. There's a car, a car length and a half, maybe almost two car lengths, and someone's in the far right and probably you know, went in before the light turned green. And he said, I. Um, as I made the turn, I could see the, um, the lady, she honked her horn, and she, I looked in my rear view, rear view mirror, and I could see she was verbally upset. So um, let's play that, that clip, if we may. Now, her, her point of view that I think she was later arrested, and she said for KITV4 News that uh, he started it. I don't 100% regret doing it, and I think I could have used different language, but I was extremely angry. So, I mean, we all get angry. What but, makes her angry over that fact pattern? I, 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 it's irrational, completely irrational. So you have to look deeper. A psychologist would be helpful. But I, let's talk about the vectors, you know, that made her angry and that make these people who involved in road rage angry. <clears throat> Number one is the car is very important to them. 
Yep. And maybe that explains to some extent why Hawaii is number one, because in Hawaii, cars are very important to people, even if they're not so fancy cars like the one she was driving. It's the center of her life, and that's the culture. You know? um, another thing is that um, the, the, you know, pe people are not well educated in driving in Hawaii. I'm sorry to say. You see that all the time. I'm sure you see that. You've been driving elsewhere, and I, years ago, drove elsewhere. And I, and I believe that drivers in Hawaii are unpredictable. Um, they don't know the rules of the road. They don't know how to deal in traffic. They don't know how to be courteous, for that matter. But Jay, how do they pass the driver's test? It's, it's sloppy is why. It's a slack system. The education is slack and the test is slack. Everybody gets a license, but not everybody should get a license. Mm -hmm. and not, it's not a question of, um, you know, it's just not a question of exactly how to make a right turn on a stoplight or anything. It's, it's, it's more like how do you conduct yourself? How do you see your experience driving on the roads? And I think a lot of people don't have a clue on how to do that. So they're disrespectful or they're just stupid. Uh, what I mean is they're just not awake. They're sleeping at the, at the switch. And this creates not only a risk for them, but it angers people around them. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, it's, and it's also a matter of learning tolerance. You know, we, I'm sure you want to talk about that in terms of uh, reacting to people who do bad things. Right. Well, you said it would be nice if we had a psychologist on here. Um, we don't have a psychologist, but I did get a lot of my research from a, a, a local nationwide expert, not just statewide expert, um, his name is Dr. Leon James, and he's a professor at uh, U of H, Manoa. And he specializes in um, um, traffic and psychology of traffic. And he's written a book, and I'm, fortunately, <laughs> my notes don't reflect where that is, but he's written a book some time ago about the nature of road rage and um, how to protect yourself from warfare. At the part of the title is Warfare on Our Highways. Here. Yeah, but don't you want to ask first, <clears throat> How do you protect yourself from having rage? You know, because you do get angry. Now, that is one of the questions on, the, on the, the driving test is, when do you not get in a car? When you're emotional about something. Well, how about when you're in the car, something happens, somebody jumps ahead of you, doesn't let you get in a lane. Yeah. I mean, it's hard to avoid an emotional reaction. It's hard to get, not get miffed in some way. The question is how you deal with that anger management, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, it's very important on the road to manage your anger because there are people who are going to make you angry. Um, of course, that's another question about why you get angry in the first place. Right. But you know, you, you've driven with somebody who says, oh, look, he cut you off, you know, that is so bad, let's get angry. And you yeah. say, no, we're not going to get angry, yeah. we're on the road, it's dangerous here to get angry. We let it happen, we, we sit back and we relax, we right. never ever get angry. And I, don't, I think a lot of people don't understand that. They, they get angry, don't control it, don't even try to control well, it. Well, and Dr. James explains ex a very good reason why that is, and I think a part of it is he said human beings are territorial. Yes. And the car is nothing more than an extension of our territory. Yes. So, and that's so in the clip you played. It was territoriality. Yeah. And so extend that to, you know, how many cars are on our roadways, our own little, um, each car is its own little territory. I mean, is it any it is. wonder why we're starting to see a rise in all these road rage incidents? But also that is there's a correlation between traffic gridlock and road rage. Oh, absolutely. You know, and you'll, we'll look at some slides later in the show, and you'll see a correlation of for those cities that ranked highest in road rage, uh, almost all of them have a correlation to being the worst uh, rated in, tra in traffic and gridlock in yeah. the nation. Well, I, th I think, um, you know, it's a sort of... Um, it's anxiety, it's anger about the traffic, about the roads, about the design of the roads, about the situation you're in. You got, you got to get somewhere, um, and you're being frustrated, uh, and you've got your investment in the car, and the car is at risk, and you're at risk, and the whole the whole thing is unpleasant. It's not it's not the dream that you saw on the ads for your new car. That it's not that way. They didn't at show all. that mine did. <clears throat> you know, you expect an open road, and and here you're all you know congested. And I think it people it gives them a kind of free floating anxiety, and they, then that transmutes into anger yeah, when somebody true. further impinges on their. The, the realization of their dream of an open road. Right. <clears throat> and I think people have got to learn. Of course, the government should probably give us more of an open road. I, I don't feel the government is doing bloody anything right. uh, to clear the congestion off these Well, highways. no, I, I know a lot of um, transportation directors, 
around the country saying the roads you're driving on today are the roads of the future. So they don't want to expand capacity because that just means they're going to fill up down the road here, no pun intended. The bottom, bottom line is, and you, you hinted to it, is um, people are in a hurry. We, we're responding faster to everything. We have to respond to texts. We have to respond to phone calls. We have to respond much, much faster than ever before. So we're trying to get to places faster. Um, uh, Dr. Uh, James. Or, or just as fast as we remember we got to them last time, except this time flash yep. jam, yep. and you can't. Yep. And, and so it's a bad surprise. And that bad surprise yep. makes you all the more anxious. Yeah. So it's simple advice from Dr. James, yet very, very difficult to do because we're always doing multiple tasks and multiple trips. He's saying give yourself 15 minutes extra no matter what trip you're trying to make. Uh, it's a good advice, but it's, you know, if a lot of people don't see the wisdom of that, well, because... Uh, well, they can't. Well, and, they can't. And so the question is, what happens when you're late? What happens when you're in a flash jam, you know, and you are to totally anxious and, and potentially angry about everything? This is the environment for you to have, ro you to have road, road rage, and the other guy, too. Um, so what do you do? I tell you, <clears throat> people have got to learn to say, look, I'm driving. It's a special license, privilege. a special privilege. Um, it's a special dangerous situation. I've got to control myself. If, even if I'm late, it's more important that I stay alive. It's more important that I not get into an altercation on the highway or crash my car than I get there on time. And I just have to put it out of my mind that I'm late and that I'm anxious. I have to just focus on doing the right thing at the right time. And people don't do that. They should do that. Well, Jay, you're, you're moving around on me here. Because <laughs> I'm going to talk about that at the end of the show. But you brought it up, so I, I'm going to have to bring this out. Um, Dr. James said this. Because uh, one of my questions to him, um, email questions to him, was back in the day, 10 years ago, there was a, a campaign called Drive with Aloha. And I said, how effective was that? And, and, and is it time for another massive campaign on driving with courtesy, driving with Aloha? And he said, um, yeah, they're good. They're good to have. These campaigns are worthwhile. But he said most of the campaigns focus on um, trying to not drive with rage or not respond to road rage because you're thinking of saving yourself and your passengers from in injury or financial burdens. He said the secret is though is to do number one, but also do number two. And number two is think about the passengers and the family mm. and the relatives mm. of the other driver. Mm. Think about them. Think about how their lives are going to be impacted if there's an altercation and an injury or death or you know something in between. He said, if you think about your family, yourself, and that other party, um, that goes a long way. There's a third thing. You want to talk about it now or after the break? Let's talk about it now. <laughs> All right. <laughs> the third thing is you my want to, curiosity is <laughs> peaked. You want to educate yeah. the other driver. You know, have a, the government come around and try to educate us to about uh, to Aloha is really futile, in my opinion. So it's got to come from somewhere else, and it's got to come, you know, every day organically. And that means you and me. So if somebody cuts us off, you know, don't get excited. Say hi. hi. Yeah. If somebody doesn't let us in a lane, you know, really being mean. Um, say hi. You know, if somebody does let us in a lane, say thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you yeah. so much. You try to reinforce the good conduct and not reinforce the bad conduct. And over time, if everybody does this, you know, traffic works better and you're less likely to have road rage around you. Wonderful suggestion, Jay. And with that, we're going to take our break. I'm Tim Apicella. This is Moving Hawaii Forward, and we'll be right back. <laughs> Living in this crazy world. You're terrific. <laughs> so far up in the confusion. Nothing is making sense for me and you. Maybe we can find a way. There's got to be a solution. How to make a brighter day. What do we do? We've got to give a little love, have a little hope. Make this world a little better. Going to the game and it's gonna be great. Early arriving for a little tailgate. I usually drink, but won't be drinking today because I'm the designated driver and that's okay. It's nice to be the guy that keeps his friends in line, keeps them from drinking too much so we can have a great time. A little responsibility can go a long way because it's all about having fun on game day. I'm the guy you wanna be. I'm the guy saving money. I'm the guy with the H2O and I'm the guy that says, Let's go. Hi, 
right, welcome back. I'm Tim Abicella. This is Moving Hawaii Forward. I'm here with Jay Fidel, president of Think Tech Hawaii, and we're discussing the unfortunate topic of road rage. So, Jay, we're going to talk about what ticks people off, and uh, some of them are ranked in order, some of them aren't. But there's a number of things that actually um, encourage others to act badly on the roadway. If you look at the incidents, you always find a cause for it. Cause uh, effect. Um, I mean, at least a superficial cause. Because mm -hmm. remember, the, the 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 basic cause is you know is is uh, this kind of unbridled anxiety that makes people angry, that trips them off, you know, as a state of mind. Yeah. But let's talk about yes, as you suggest. Let's talk about the kinds of physical things, you know, driving experiences that that make people angry. What do you got? Well, what do you think? Let me, without looking, what do you think the number one thing is that irritates drivers the most? Number one. Cutting people off. Close. Um, it's watching someone look at their phone. Really? Yeah, that, that ranked um, in a 2015 Expedia Road Rage uh, research report by um, GFK. They surveyed 1,000 drivers, which isn't a lot, but uh, it's hard for people to talk about this subject and certainly admit that they are participating in road rage. So 26% um, said texting was the number one thing that really irritated them. And I bet, see somebody else texting. Yeah, and I bet it's higher if you're at a stoplight and you have a very very short uh, sequence for right, the stoplight. Right, and you're sitting and there. And it's green and you see the person in front of you, their face is down like this, texting or looking at their phone, and only a couple cars get through that sequence. I mean, I bet uh, that, that number goes Because then higher. you pay the price for his right. dawdling. Right, correct. So let's look at kind of another one is, um, yeah, and you hit it, is um, merging in traffic without signaling. Um, that ranks very, very high too. People get very irritated because you're putting their car in jeopardy and their family. Yeah. By, by just kind of merging in and. So you're also taking territoriality, you're not following the rules, you're being a real bum. Yeah. Sorry. I haven't used that word for a while, but I, <laughs> I, think, it, I think it applies. So you're being a real bum. Yeah. I like that. Okay, well, cutting off, that's, that's part of merging in traffic without sign signaling. Um, tailgating. Um, tailgating people thinking that if I tailgate you, I'm either going to do one of two things. I'm either going to make you go faster or I'm going to make you turn off right or left. Get and, out of that lane. And, you know, that's, that's a recipe. That's a recipe for disaster because if I slow down and you hit me, then we have a real incident, and uh, and a real incident is always cause for road rage. Right. People get really crazy. If well, they get I hit. do know people that if, when they're tailgated, and it's, it's been you know a lot of people do this is when I'm being tailgated, I will on purpose go slower. Yeah. So now the person who's trying to get you to go faster, you've just created you know attention attention between the two parties yeah even though you're going hey you want to tailgate me i'll just go as slow as yeah, i want he knows you're doing it intentionally, intentionally. twick is pick yeah and now he's angry at you right and you're angry at him and uh, you have a, an altercation very likely and if there's an accident boy that's going to ex escalate right away yeah and earlier when we first started off we talked about well what's the cause here in hawaii i mean this is the land of aloha why do we have this here well we mentioned that bringing in habits from other states, other countries, um, they have speed differential, you know, habits. And so what ranks very high here is slow drivers. Not just in here in Hawaii, but nationwide or survey bad drivers. is slow drivers or bad drivers. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, you know, you describe uh, the guy who's texting at the phone. Well, there's, there's a, a, an, old, an old, you know, there's a variation on that theme. It's when <clears throat> you're coming down, you know the light's going to change, and it's green. But he decides to slow down for some reason. Why? Why? <laughs> God knows I why. I the answer to he's, this. He's slowing down because he thinks at some time, at some indeterminate time in the future, it's going to change. So he's going to sort of change it in his mind. And he slows down, and he slows down, and he slows down. Still green. And you're behind him, and you can't go anywhere. And then it goes. Uh, for you know, 10 years, I've been waiting for an explanation on this point. Thank you. <laughs> this, this was very, very, very conservative driving. Right. But it's a total waste of time. Yeah. There's nobody in front of him. He's not keeping up with the, the speed limit or even the minimum speed. And you, you suffer because you don't want to go around him. You have to wait for him. So he's a bad driver. It's bad education. He needs to be educated. Yeah. And, I, you know, people like that, there are a lot of them. They, in their whole lives, they never learn different or better. They're always like that for yeah. their whole driving lives. And it, it, it's really problematic because the guy behind them is very impatient. I think, personally, I think the state needs to have a, a sub-chapter a sub of required 
text, reading, whatever, videos, I don't care what it is, before you take that test, dedicated to good driving habits. Absolutely agree. And civility on the roadway. Absolutely, civility, um, there it is. Civility. So, okay, guess what else ranks high? And we certainly have a lot of this. Any guesses? We have a lot of it. Uh, we're known for it. Oh, stink eye. How about stink eye? Close. That's, I'll, we're going to come to that. I'm going to give that to you. I'll give that to you. No, tourists. People, people get mad at tourists. Yeah, they get very upset with them because, you know, again, they're from an out of area. Yeah, um, it's true. They don't know and they're ignorant drivers and they get lost and they're very tentative about their driving. But it's all the more reason to cool give them, yeah, give them a break. manage your own anger. Gee, okay, they're tourists. In fact, I would say, you know, you can extend that kind of mindset to anything. Gee, he just cut me off, or he just did something really nasty, stupid, and all that. It's okay. Relax. Take a deep breath. <laughs> There's no need to get excited yeah. about it. It's not going to get you anywhere or any faster. True. All right. We're moving along. we got to knock some of this out because <laughs> we got a lot to cover, and I probably don't have enough time. Um, I think the other big one is uh, drifting in other people's lanes, honking the horn uh, because the light changed too soon, and you, you know you're in a hurry to get them to go, and so you're honking at oh, the horn. Oh yeah, that's that's a true fact. I mean, somebody honks the horn in Hawaii, especially in Hawaii. Bad news. They do that on Seventh Avenue in Manhattan. Nobody cares. Yeah. Cat happens all the time. Although I think there's an ordinance there too. Um, but people really hear they don't honk their horns. And once you do that, once you honk, you'd better have a good reason. Yeah. And I always look around and say, is there a good reason for that? Or is he just, you know, acting like 7th Avenue? I saw <laughs> this at the airport years and years ago. Someone honked, and a gentleman got out, went up to the, the offending party, and screamed, we don't honk our horns here in Hawaii, and really gave him a, a chewing out. And I'm going... Okay. Okay. Good for him, but maybe not. Bad idea, though. Bad, Bad idea. idea. Because, you know, when you get out and you get by the window of this guy and you don't who know. just did that, you don't know what's going to happen. You don't know. It was could, a bad idea. You have a gun. Really he bad could, idea. get out of his car and start chasing you. I saw this happen recently in a parking lot. These two guys didn't even know each other, and one was backing out and in some way threatening the other guy. Well, they got into it. And what, the one guy was chasing the other guy around. It's really? total strangers in a parking lot and wow. a jack-in-the-box. I said, well, this is really awful that they, you know, and I, and I said, I'm, I'm closing been my door. Sriracha. It was a little hot that locking day. Locking my, yeah, it was. <laughs> it was. It was a weekend and it was hot. Okay. Yeah. You're almost out of time, you know. Yeah, I know, and we got to not to, last thing, bicyclists who don't follow the road rules. So. Oh. Yeah. For bicyclists, you've got to give them a pass. You, you know, you've Jay. got to give them a pass. I mean, Jay. we talk about you're transportation. A, you're a bicyclist. Fan and, and but well, no, they, they have the, to follow the, the rules. The cyclist, the cyclist who doesn't follow the rules, is risking his life. Yeah, no, that's true. And that's not a good idea. But you know, gee whiz, we we should encourage cycling. And if you have road rage over a cyclist and you yell at him or cut him off, or and people do, they you know they try to pay him back. Yeah, well, he's completely. Well, they, that's the other thing. They try to maneuver a car in a little sudden maneuver to you know kind of like spook him, you know, yeah. scare him. Yeah, and that's bad. <laughs> Yeah. That's all well, bad. You kill them that fast. <laughs> well, let's so, see. You know, depends on how agile your hands and your steering gotta, components you gotta are. Got to give so. cyclists a yeah. pass, even if they're wrong. I, I agree. <laughs> I mean, you bet we have to be nice. Okay, I want to talk about the hierarchy of road rage because this is really important. I want you to take the first five points, if you could. Um, <laughs> You think that's easy? <laughs> right there. Okay, the first five points. <laughs> Mentally condemning other drivers, verbally denigrating them, closing ranks to deny another driver an opportunity to change lanes, give, give stink eye, speeding past another car or revving the engine. Boy, that's out of the 50s. Yeah. Um, preventing another driver from passing you. I went to six. Yeah, that's okay. I'll, I'll take you to the next five or so. Uh, all right, go ahead. Um, then you start graduating to tailgating to press the other driver to get out of the way. And then you start honking or yelling at someone through your window to do, you know, indicate your displeasure. You're going to use your car to retaliate by making sudden gestures, threatening gestures with your vehicle. So that's getting rank, ranking up there. You um, pursue another. You start following them. So that's like number 12. Number 13 is you're getting out of the car now. You're engaging in a verbal dispute on the street or in a parking lot. That's getting up to the number 20. This is number 14. Uh, you start keeping a weapon in your car in case you decide to get in a road rage incident. Oh, boy. See? See how this is graduating? Can you see the judge asking questions about that? Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, how many people carry a baseball bat in their car just in case, right? 
I, you know, I don't know anyone, but there are people. Yeah, but there are people. Uh, you delivery start bumping or ramming into a car. Oh my God! And then you try to run the car off the road. That's number sixteen. Oh my God! Then you get out it of the car worse. and you actually start doing a physical beating, mm, uh, altercation. Rage. Yep. And number eighteen, you're trying to run someone down. Number nineteen, you're shooting at a car. And the last thing is you actually killed someone. Well, that'll give you some gratification, but only for a moment. I mean, I think you have to see road rage as, as something that leads, conceivably leads to all of these things. Yeah. And you have to realize, you know, you have to see yourself in court. What's going to happen to you? I mean, there's no way you're going to escape killing somebody on road rage. You're yeah. going to get prosecuted and probably convicted and probably sentenced to a long term. There's no escape for yeah. it, even if he did something really bad. Yeah. Um, no, you're, all, you're both going to be involved, no matter if you're the receiving or the yeah, perpetrator. Yeah. We got a quick video on what the HPD recommends. Aloha everyone, I'm Detective Cherie Souza, and welcome to another segment of Ask HPD. Today's question comes from Vanessa. Vanessa asked, what should I do if I encounter a driver with road rage? Vanessa, if you are behind the wheel and encounter a driver with road rage, do not engage with him or her. Do not pull over on the side of the road and do not get out of your vehicle. Doing so may increase the chance for violence. Instead, Call 911 and an officer will be sent to your location to assist you. We want to remind all drivers to follow the rules of the road. Be courteous and drive with aloha. Thanks for joining me today. As always, if you have any other questions, please feel free to email or message us on any of our social media websites. You can also check out our other Ask HPD videos on our YouTube page. On behalf of Chief Kealoha, until next time, aloha. Okay, you just saw that uh, that clip, and believe it or not, I don't know why HPD is using that clip, because she did three things horribly wrong. Um, number one, she uh, made eye contact with him. That's something you don't want to do in a road rage incident. Just ignore him. She looked over at him. Number two is she used a hand gesture. She went like this. Okay, bad idea. Bad idea. I <laughs> bad agree. idea. Yeah. Number three is she start. If you saw her, she started verbalizing something. Worst idea because they're assuming you're saying the worst things about him. So those three things are things you don't do when you're confronted by someone with road rage. Um, don't make eye contact. You don't return gestures. You certainly don't get out of the car. You don't yell or, or honk the horn back at them. And, and you know, the bottom line is, um, you know, you just try to disengage. You think to yourself, how can I make this safer? How can I make the situation safer for myself, my family, and the other driver and their family. Yeah. So you know, if they're tailgating, let them pass. Let them pass by it. You know, you know get out of the way. Um, you know, just simple common sense things. But you don't know until you're kind of faced with that. You know, to that particular dilemma. So that's that's. Yeah. Disengage. Gradually. You know, don't race off or anything. Don't do anything remarkable. Just slow down a little bit. Let them pass you. Give them that part Give of the road they want. Yeah. Give them their space. Don't engage with them. Disengage with them nice and slow and gradual, organically. And then, you know, as a result, they'll, they'll probably cool you know, off. A bad day on the road can affect your life and the life of your families for, yeah. for years to come. Yeah. So the it's the not other worth thing it. is she, she pulled out a phone and yeah. she made a call. Well, actually, HPD says if, if it gets bad, call 911. And they'll they'll assist. So, yeah. okay. All right. Well, that's all the time today we have for today. Um, I appreciate you coming on and talking about this this important topic. I'm Tim Apicella. This is Moving Hawaii Forward, and we'll see you in a couple couple weeks. Aloha.